So on the technical front, I thought this was uh, interesting. Hmm. So do you have fiber internet at home? We don't have it available on our street yet. Nope. Who's your Who's your carrier? Can I say? Can I ask that? Yeah. So we have um, Charter. We have Cox Cox, Cox Cable. Oh, okay. And what is your subscribed internet speed? Um, that's a good question. I think they say it's. They call it the gigabyte system. Um, the gigabyte package, plan. But yeah, but our upload speed is still around between 40 and 50 usually that's what i was that was that was the next thing i was going to ask you what yeah. your upload speed so downloads like pretty to, good usually six or seven hundred but upload still for yeah years. so the the cable companies from from my unscientific survey appear to really choke the upload speed of your internet so the way so the way the internet connection works for the non-technical out there is it's a highway of data and there's an upload or a north and there's a download south upload and download and um, the internet companies can control the speed in both directions. And historically, upload bandwidth has always been a premium and, and it's always been choked. And what upload gives you at your home, if you have a fast upload speed, is how much data can you send to the internet? So if you're running a file server and you're trying to send files to people uh, or up to the up to the cloud or if, um, you're taking a ton of photos at home or a ton of video and you want to upload that to your iCloud or digital storage, it's that it, the upload speed is how how fast you can get that up to the Internet. And then, of course, once it touches the server, if you needed to pull it back down, you'd be using your download speed. Uh, so the cable companies, it seems, advertise the download speed as the effective speed but it's kind of um in the fine print is there they choke your upload so in your case and i and i had somebody reach out to me to, to talk about this i think comcast even was down was giving a gigabit on their gigabit plan a thousand megabits per second down or it, which is a, a gigabit is a thousand gigabits so you have a thousand down but they were only providing like 30 up which is laughable yeah um i we finally have uh we have go net speed here at my house which is a local uh fiber provider and it's it's um it, it reminds me of like the t-mobile of internet service it was just like it's the anti-internet provider you know they just they they there's no hidden fees there's no secrets there's no gotchas the 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 internet speed they provide is symmetrical so they have a gigabit plan i don't even subscribe to it because i know based on our usage we don't need a gigabit i don't need anything to come down any faster than 500 but what's important is it's symmetrical so we have a 500 down and 500 up so um connecting with you through this channel is really easy um uploading photos and video editing is all is, is easy so there's a little background of the internet so when i saw this headline frontier now i remember do you remember Frontier bought the um, internet assets from AT&T about eight years ago, I think? I do remember that, yeah. And it was a total catastrophe. <laughs> like it was a, it, they, I don't even know where Frontier came from, um, but we were seeing that, you know, we were, we literally had clients calling us because their internet was down and mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, in a, in a, multi-use building or multi-tenant building in Hartford or one of the cities, you know, for the, there's um, data closets in the basement where the service comes into, right? And Frontier was just like unplugging our client's service to reappropriate that copper to another tenant. <laughs> and, and and it was like an early days of the of their acquisition of, of the AT&T assets. And it was just a nightmare. I mean, the it happened repeatedly they just were they, they just didn't have anything indexed or anything so um and and so frontier is not a company that i look at fondly um for a long time mm -hmm. but when they get a headline like this frontier rolls out five gigabit per second fiber internet across the u.s that's that's pretty compelling so i don't have any personal experience with frontier lately but Hopefully they're operationally mature enough. And when they make a headline like this, this is, this is pretty telling. The other thing too, is, um, it's pretty, pretty competitive. I think they said, um, let's see, uh, $155 a month for, I think, uh, another five gig plan. 
and they were yeah. very specific in this being is mentioning that it's symmetrical see that that's the key right there symmetrical mm -hmm. so um yeah that's what i wanted to report on another when it when you see a when you see a big telco making uh dropping a headline that they are rolling out more fiber it's better for everybody uh fiber is symmetrical you you want more symmetrical service and quite frankly uh you, you want competition in this space mm -hmm. you know because the only way that the the internet service gets better is when there's competition right and so in a situation like this where they say rolls it out they literally mean rolling it out right they have to put in physical cable to make this work oh definitely definitely it's it's there's no shortcut around these these internet companies having to to spend significant capex to roll out the infrastructure because that's what it is it's an infrastructure so yeah they are literally uh trucks on the street rolling out i mean you remember when verizon uh i think uh google had google fios mm -hmm. verizon i think 2012 announced that they were rolling out fiber everywhere uh i think i think and then they announced that they were pulling back from that fiber deployment um the east coast i think saw a lot of it but it's not everywhere and is this because do we anticipate at some time everything going wireless through either cell networks or satellites or because uh, to the layman when you hear about rolling out cable and stuff it's like really are we, are we still are we still doing that well you know wi-fi is is a short range technology yeah so it, it's you really do need to get a hard wire to to you really you really want a physical wire or connection to as many homes and businesses and endpoints as possible and then supplement those endpoints with wi-fi and wi-fi is getting much much better um cellular with their 5g deployment they they're really trying to compete with with land-based internet service providers but the the reality is wireless <clears throat> is a limited resource you uh there's a there's the radio spectrum frequent uh filled with frequencies and you know we have aviation we've got uh citizens band we've got uh, fm radio you know you would know more than me maybe even like all the ways that uh, you've got the military mm -hmm. you've you've got broadcast tv in there somewhere um so like you've got a finite resource that that everybody's trying to divide up and and use and um an internet and or cell the cell services is a, is, a, is another one of those so it's a limited resource and they you know the technology that that, that they've used you know they've implemented and developed to get use out of, and every time i see a new wi-fi standard i'm amazed i'm like wow you guys figured out how to split the hair again you know yeah. um i mean i remember in college when wi-fi first came out it was it was 11 megabits per second and it was um you know you could only have like you know a couple maybe a dozen or so it, uh, mm -hmm. connections to the access point and and it was and that was time divide, uh, divided so for every wireless device you put on the network the collective network got slower you know um so yeah it's always impressive when they keep adding wireless technologies but yeah, I mean, so I guess to answer your question, you, you want as much physical connectivity as possible and get that as close to as many people as possible. That's how you're going to get the most reliable and fastest speeds. And then you use wireless as the endpoints to make it make things more comfortable for for the users. You do even in your home, if you're if you're able to do it, you know, I think we have. I think we have over a hundred wireless devices or hundred network devices in my house already. And, um, you definitely want to, you want to wire as many things that you can. So if you can get ethernet to your TVs, if you can get ethernet to your computers, if you have stationary computers, or if you have a stationary workspace that you work from frequently, you know, you, you want to, you want to wire everything. Um, unless you really are like a family of three, um, not particularly tech savvy. You don't have 
you know, smart lights, you know, Wi-Fi white uh, light switches, doorknobs, doorbells. If you're not really going crazy like that, but I mean, let's face it. I, it seems like every appliance you buy now has Wi-Fi on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, running speed tests as you were, you were talking there. So my my download is 750, but my upload is 32, which is funny. And then on the uh, cellular network for my phone, it's download 61 and upload 10. So, um, yeah. So that upload is really the the crime again. You yeah. know, that that's really the, the crime. The crime, right? Because that's not a technology issue. That's just a assist a you know provider issue. Right. That. And that's a that, and that's a and that's see that speed test was really interesting. Why why was my download so slow, but my upload is 150? That's that is an unusual test. So I I wonder I, I wonder if that's related to me streaming right now with you. Yeah. And I think most most people with average use probably aren't going to notice a ton of difference. I know when we upgraded our system here to the latest router and, and the latest plan, like I didn't really notice any any issue with like day to day use. But if you're uploading big files or you know when we're uploading stuff to YouTube or whatever, that that matters. But as yeah, far as like regular streaming, watching services or whatever, it didn't really. Yeah, matter. I'll put it in context. So you only need. Uh, so if, if you're watching an a HD stream from Netflix, you only need, I think about 12 here, you yeah. need zero here and you need 12 here. So if you're watching Netflix and you have over 12 megabits per second, Netflix is downloading as much of the video you're watching as, uh, there's like, it's called a buffer. So they'll mm -hmm. actually go ahead of what you're watching and pull it down just in case there's a blip in the matrix or, you know, in your connectivity or whatever. Now they have a buffer. So. Yeah, as long as you're exceeding the you know HD requirement of, of 12. Now, that's 12 meg. I think it's 12. Don't quote me. You can Google it and somebody will tell you exactly what a, an HD stream needs for bandwidth. I think it's 12 um, because I think 4K is 25. So, and, but then if you have three houses in or three TVs in the house watching an HD stream, um, you can imagine that this gets saturated pretty quick. And then if the kid is pulls up YouTube on his phone and he, and he, and you, and his phone is asking for an HD stream, you know, that, you know, you have four things that could, could chop that down pretty quick. So, um, but again, they're all buffering. So mm -hmm. if there's a pause over here and a pause over there, whatever it's, it, it's going to pull that down. The other thing that the software will do is it'll down sample. So if it detects that it's hitting some upper threshold of your speed limit, um, you, you may or may not notice, but your a, your HD 1080p stream may downsample to 720. And if you're not really keen to it, you may not even notice that you're getting a down. You may see some artifacting or um, glyphing real quick, and then it'll kind of like re re uh, like re clean the screen, I guess. But you're you just like the software downsampled to try to give you um, the continuity in your, in your stream. Right. You'll see the, you'll see the little squares sometimes sort of yeah. pop in there and unless it's something super, you know, unless you're watching sports or something. Yeah. But like, most people be like, you can attribute that maybe even to the slowness of your fire stick or your, or the device, you know, you know, so you don't, you don't always know is like, is my, is my, is the device, you know, glitching or kind of choking a little bit, or is it the, is it the internet service? And then of course for email, and web browsing you need you need like one right you know what i mean so it's yeah you know it's really and the and the life cycle for televisions is a lot longer than it used to be i know we haven't bought like when we moved in we you know bought a couple things but i mean the, the tv that's in our bedroom is something my wife had since before we got married and it's like you Same know here. you're usually kind of half watching it anyways you're falling asleep or whatever but um so it's probably not 4K. It may not even be 1080. It might be 720 at the max anyway. Yep. Yep. TVs, I'm notoriously not. That's not where I spend my geek dollars on. I no. I'm, I I can recognize a high quality. Can uh, I can recognize a high quality picture, and my my preference is an HD, you know, or 4K picture. But um, I don't obsess over it. And quite frankly, because like. I remember you remember this probably too when HD was rolling out HD. So you had your four, you had your four by three yeah. tube TVs, you know, 
And then <clears throat> the wide screens came out and even those were low definition or standard definition. And then they came out with wide screens, high definition, but high definition was really only 490p, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and people didn't really know what this stuff was. So then you, you overbuy the TV, you spend all this money on this TV, but then the broadcasters aren't recording and, and pumping that, the con that level of content to your screen. So now you're like overpaid on the TV. And then you might get like the one commercial or the one. T Remember those times where like you'd get one picture or one movie mm -hmm. or something that was like or one one TV show that was recorded in HD. And you're like, oh, man, that looks so good. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even like uh, like YouTube TV, and they they still try to upsell you on the 4K package. It's like I don't even think we have a 4K TV. I don't have a 4. I think my father in uh, in in his in his living room has he has a 4K, but we don't have 4K TVs around the house. It just and it's interesting, big picture, how much the idea of big picture. Huh, that's funny, it's but picture. it's funny like the uh, the attention that people have. I mean, people aren't you know even if it's a sporting event. You know, it's pretty rare that there's something that's like must see. But even at the Super Bowl, most people are going to have their phones out half the time anyway, you know. Um, yeah. And a lot of people's I, eyes really can't tell the difference anyway. Like my wife's eyes aren't aren't that great. So the idea of having like a 4K TV in the bedroom or something with her glasses off would be completely useless. That's true. That's true. I, I am looking forward to the day when I'll do, you know, a hardware refresh and all of the content has, you know, all the cameras out on studios and all the cameras out in, in uh, stadiums and all the broadcast equipment is 4K and that's the standard. And, band, you know, this five gigabit um, connection, by the way, from fiber uh, or from Frontier, like that really is important for the transition to 4K, too. Um, you know, I the the you know, the SD cards, you know, micro yeah. SD cards, you know, they're putting like two terabyte micro SD cards now. Know. You know what I mean? And that's important because in order for 4K to become ubiquitous and, and you know, fully adopted everywhere, like we need large storage. We need fat Internet connections um, because the that date, those data files, those picture files are so, so big. Um, and I do look forward to the day when like, yeah, the 4K is the standard and everything looks nice and crisp. But for now. Yeah. You know. What's interesting, have you seen the TVs that are now that have the battery packs, which is kind of interesting. So so one of the, uh, you know, one of the new nuisances, if you're placing a TV or hanging a TV is running the electric wire and stuff like that. So now the they, they have like a like a slim sort of battery pack that fits behind the behind the TV that will last. I don't know how long it lasts, maybe 40 hours or something like that. And so you're you plug it in you can just basically hang it anywhere you know it's like a picture and you're like i want to you know hang this over here or whatever that kind wow of i haven't i haven't actually seen that i did see in at ces the consumer electronics trade show in vegas it happens every year in january they were big on wireless tvs yeah is that what you're talking about well that's a yeah i mean that's all the all the wires i mean every it's because you don't have to plug it in yeah that's interesting i don't know if i want to i would want to have to charge my tv yeah, it does seem, seem, you'd have to get, I mean, you'd have to get a significant battery life. You'd or like a battery rotation or, if you have one yeah. charging and you're one using maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting.